Well, welcome back, men, to the Warriors of Grace podcast. My name is Dave, and I'm the host for the show. And today we're going to continue our series, uh, Dangers to Intimacy with God and One Spouse, uh, talking about family, worship, and marriage. Uh, you know, one of the things before we get into this that I want to say, uh, we are going to talk about, you know, family worship and what it is, but I, I, and we'll talk about this as we go, but one of the things that I think we we think is that with family worship is, oh, well, you have to have a book or you have to be, you know, this great scholar or so knowledgeable in order to do this. No. You know what? You can sit and you can have a conversation with your spouse about a variety of cultural and theological topics and, and just bringing the Bible to bear in those conversations of being the leader, maybe even saying, hey, you know, in, in our time together today, I want to talk about this uh, topic, but we're also going to go look at and talk about it from God's Word. And you know what? That What that does is it helps to uh, it helps to redirect the conversation, not to just talk about whatever topic it is in our going on in our culture, but to see and to investigate, hey, this is what Scripture uh, says about this topic. This is how uh, we should think in in a biblical way about these things. And this this kind of thing is often missed um, as we talk about uh, family worship. And and family worship is absolutely vital because it, it is at the heart, I think, of what it means to be a man of God in the home. Uh, that is a man that leads his home, that shepherds his home. If you if you whether you just have a a wife. And that's great. Or you have also children. Uh, family worship is is vital. Uh, family worship is the regular use of scripture, song, and prayer by a family u- unit guided by the man of the house. Uh, family worship is worship. It's not merely a religious discipline. It is a meeting with the triune God in a spirit of adoration by means of three uh, key ingredients. First, family worship through Scripture. And so we re- when we read the Bible, God preaches about Himself and the indescribable gift of His dear Son, the Lord Jesus, to a needy world. This message is not just for information. It's also for exaltation. It's for worship. And second, families worship through singing. It's inescapable. God's people sing. There's 150 psalms uh, in, in the, the, the book of Psalms. In fact, in Colossians three sixteen, we're instructed to uh, to to sing, and that imply that means also that we're to sing in the home. Third, families worship through prayer, and since prayer is the chief way in which we show thankfulness to God, our prayers must be worshipful, not merely formal. Family prayer should reflect the pastoral ethos and pathos of our high priest. Family worship is regular. This is illustrated by the practice of the early church uh, and weekly worship, even in the Lord's day, is insufficient for families who have been touched by the grace of God. Scripture exhorts us to worship God daily, giving uh, Him glory in all things. And before God established worship in the tabernacle, His people worshiped in family tents, Psalm 118.15. The voice of rejoicing and salvation is in the tents of the righteous. Job's piety shines in his prayer for his children in Job 1.5. The faith of young Timothy blossomed in the fertile soil of family worship in 2 Timothy 1.5. Christians must spend time alone with God in their prayer closets, but they should also worship together with their families through the use of scripture, song, and prayer. So specifically, God requires men like good shepherds to lead their families into green pastures. God expects, uh, expected uh, Abraham uh, in Genesis 18, 19, he says to command his children and his household after him that they keep the way of the Lord. Consider also the example of Cornelius. Uh, Acts 10, 1 says, a devout man who feared God with all his household. It is no surprise when Peter came to Caesarea, uh, Caesarea to preach the gospel, Cornelius rallied his house to attendance in uh, Acts 10.33. We are all present before God to hear all the things commanded you by God. Family worship is an instrument for instilling both old and young with a consciousness of the Lord, His Word, and our call to worship. 
In his research for one of his books, George Barnett demonstrated that parents who pass along to their children the baton of, of spiritual maturity and vitality have one thing in common. They take God's word on life and family at face value and apply those words faithfully and consistently. Missionary John Patton related the indelible impact family worship left on his life when he said this, and went on, on his knees and all of us kneeling around him in family worship, our father poured out his whole soul with tears. For every need, we all felt as if in the presence of our living Savior and learned to know and love him as our divine friend. See, children notice when worship is only once a week activity. God often works powerfully in young lives whose souls are warmed by the incubator of daily family worship. Well, you might wonder, how can I improve my family worship? Many families are convinced by the need of family worship, but they struggle in practice. What can be done? Study family worship as a family. Spend time. Uh, even uh, I encourage you to check out Joel Beakey's book on booklet on family worship. Uh, this, this study will help you. Stick to a plan. Uh, reading scripture uh, ha best happens over a lifetime. So commit to reading the word. Families should take in, uh, should include a variety in their plans and adjust them over time. But following a regular scripture reading helps us to read the Bible the way it was meant to be read as a cohesive history of God's redemptive work. Select a time that works and, and be flexible uh, with that time because of busyness. Sing. For some Christians, particularly those who aren't raised in the church or in singing homes, the thought of introducing song to family worship, it, it seems uh, highly unlikely. But as with all things, in order to establish a, a fresh tradition of family singing, begin with what you know. Sing familiar hymns and songs and, and then uh, maybe invest in a, in a good hymnal as well and work through that. Mo most of us uh, become frustrated when our family worship uh, ideal eclipse reality. Family worship is like a great friendship. It has its bumps. It's forged to regular, meaningful interaction. William Gouds observed that a nail that at one blow barely enters with many blows is knocked all the way in. So it is with repetition in family worship. Through the gospel, Jesus enters our lives and our families, and where he has entered, he is to be worshipped. Where he is worshipped, we will trust what what he will, he'll stay and live and work and bless. So we should be committed to family worship. And this is part of, uh, like we talked about recently, about growing in friendship with your spouse. Have, have regular time, you know, uh, drives, uh, long trips are, are great for this, where you can, uh, your spouse can ask questions or you guys can just have long protracted conversations about a wide variety of topics, of course, you know, your kids might interrupt and those kind of things. But but make the time to have those kinds of, of conversations as well as in addition to family worship. Well, this episode is, is shorter today, but it's no less important. And I want to thank you for listening or watching this episode of the Warriors of Grace podcast. Until next time, may the Lord richly bless you and keep you.